How's it going everybody? It's Javi from Weather Sponge 5000 and of course we're going to take a look at the Northern Atlantic where we have six tropical disturbances right now we're keeping close eye on especially this one which could potentially become our next major hurricane that could potentially move far south enough to directly impact some of the Caribbean islands such as the Lesser Antilles potentially as far south and west as Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. This is definitely something we're going to keep a close eye on, especially since two of the most reliable computer models, GFS and the European model, are now forecasting a major hurricane, which wasn't um, expected um, as early as, um, which wasn't expected yesterday, where we had the GFS model not leaning towards developing a tropical cyclone, or at least a hurricane with this storm system, but now we're starting to see the shift and they're showing very similar trajectories as well which does get me which does does have me concerned that we're gonna see a major hurricane not only impact the Caribbean islands but potentially the United States in the more long-term future depending on how much ridging there is so we're definitely gonna um, talk about this um, in detail in this video especially before I get to the rest of the tropical disturbances as of right now, the National Hurricane Center is giving this a medium 60% chance of developing, but I'm def I I'm at least expecting this chance to rise into a high chance over the next several days. It really seems like the computer models are very confident in developing at, le at the very least a tropical storm with this, and I definitely wouldn't be surprised if we see a hurricane or potentially a major hurricane in the more long-term future. We're just going to need to wait, I'll say, um, several days or potentially as early as tomorrow tomorrow to see the National Hurricane Center update its forecast to where we see a higher chance because the chance does increase the further westward in the forecasts um, we are with this tropical disturbances so expect this chance to increase and we'll likely see a tropical cyclone in the main development region based on all the factors we're seeing as well as the amount of wind uh, or at least the lack thereof of wind shear over the main development region. So here is the tropical disturbance right now coming off the West African coast and already it does look concerning because we're seeing a very large blow up of thunderstorm activity surrounding the low pressure system and that isn't something you see every day when it comes to a tropical wave coming off the West African coast because typically the thunder showers are a lot more scattered and we see a much more elongated area of moisture with a tropical wave that comes off the West African coast but this is concerning because not only do we see a huge blow up of thunderstorm activity that's very consolidated, but we do see the area of moisture is very small, it's very compact. If I were to show you this picture without any context, you'd probably might assume that this will be a tropical storm and, um, and I wouldn't blame you if you'd think that because there's a huge blow up of thunderstorm activity surrounding this storm so it's definitely very conducive for development even as it encounters potentially some dry air over the main development region which definitely does have me concerned um, when it comes to the future of this storm system. So here's what the latest run of the GFS model is stating and you're going to clearly see that the GFS model is much different compared to yesterday and unfortunately that's not a good thing because as you're going to see later during the run we see that this area of moisture comes off the West African coast and we do see quite a bit of moisture so that will definitely promote a lot more lift and convection around the center of circulation and it does become a lot more compact than what the GFS model initially anticipated in its prior run and continuing to move forward we see the gfs model wants to immediately just rapidly intensify this storm right over the central portion of the main development region where we see the pressure drop down well before it reaches the caribbean down to 973 millibars this is equivalent close to a category 3 hurricane and based on its trajectory it's looking like it's moving right I'm straight towards the Lesser Antilles and potentially Puerto Rico and we see the pressure drop even more and it pretty much maintains um, around the same um, pressure as this continues ahead further westward where we see it um, hover right around the 960s and 970s so right around category 3 status. Thankfully it doesn't, um, the GFS model doesn't want to strengthen it 
um, at least for now, much more than a storm that's hovering around the 960s when it comes to millibar range. But uh, but even then, even if we were to see a 960 millibar storm impact the Caribbean, that would still be a major hurricane and that would still bring intense impacts to much of the Caribbean islands if this were to directly move over um, the Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico. But moving forward, we see that the GFS model wants to take it just slightly north of the Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico, but it's still a little bit too uncomfortably close, especially since if we were to take a look at the forecast hour, we're 240 hours out, so a lot could change with the forecast. Hopefully, it changes for the better. Hopefully, we see the storm move a lot further northward and not come close to the Caribbean islands. However, there's an equal possibility that this moves further southward if we see more ridging than anticipated. The GFS model has been leaning towards that direction, steering this a little bit more southward than um, anticipated. So that might not be a good trend, and we're gonna need to see if that trend continues where it wants to take this storm further southward. But um, pretty much the point is the Caribbean islands you need to pay very close attention to the possibility of a major hurricane moving very close to um, your area and potentially even in the more long term future. The United States might need to pay attention because if we do see enough ridging by the time it approaches this point in um, latitude, then that, I mean longitude, then that could certainly pose a threat to the southeast United States or even as far north as the northeast. Um, if we were to see the right amount of ridging, still far too uncertain to say. Um, right now, the good news is that the GFS model does steer this out to sea before it reaches the United States. Hopefully, that stays that way. But again, this forecast is very far out and there still could be changes regarding the ridging. But in terms of the amount of dry air and moisture surrounding the storm system, there's going to be plenty of moisture. The dry air is expected to be enough, and the U European model also is expecting a very similar forecast when it comes to the amount of moisture. It expects a uh, compact, um, very um, humid, or at least um, very convective um, storm um, to move into the main development region. We do see quite a bit of dry air thanks to the north um, easterly flow that we were seeing um, earlier during the week where we saw um, this spring uh, plenty of dry air right over the main development region. However, the European model is currently expecting that at least initially it should struggle a little bit because of the dry air we do see the storm is a little bit lopsided much of the moisture is on the southern side and when a storm system is lopsided that definitely prevents a storm from maximizing um its heat engine maximizing the amount of lift and convective activity around the center circulation which increases the pressure along the surface and creates a weaker storm in general but the European model, at least in the more long-term future, expects the storm to undergo rapid intensification where we see the pressure drop down to a scary 950 millibars and 939 at one point just to the north of the Caribbean island. So, and what's interesting is that at least when it comes to trajectory, the GFS and the European model are awfully similar for a storm system, or at least for a forecast that's over 200 hours out. So this could be an indication that it might move just to the north of the Caribbean islands where it won't necessarily directly impact the Caribbean, but could still bring a high rip current risk as well as potentially gusty winds or you guys may experience the outer bands of this storm um we're just gonna need to wait and see if that forecast maintains but it, but it seems like the general consensus is that the computer models want to bring this towards this general area which could um pose at least a risk that the caribbean islands could experience a direct impact depending on how the forecast changes over the next several days and how much ridging we see just to the north of it and again moving forward with the forecast even if this doesn't directly impact the caribbean you still need to watch out um, towards the united states because if we see enough ridging then this could easily move for westward and bring direct impacts um, along the United States or even um, the Bahamas or Cuba potentially if this were to take a track for a southward. Let's take a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly and we do see that um, 
what does have me a little bit concerned is that we do see a strong amount of ridging exists right around um, Monday, September 11th, which could potentially um, steer this storm a little bit further westward and continue the trend where it could bring direct impacts to the United States. We're going to need to see if this keeps up. If we were to compare that to what the GFS model is stating, the GFS model does at least initially expect stronger ridging, um, which is the reason why it wants to bring the storm a little bit further southward. But um, the GFS model expects a tr uh, pretty big trough to move in right around the September 13th time frame and steer it out to sea. Hopefully the European model is forecasting a similar forecast, but it's a little bit too far out to say for certain. So definitely keep this in mind. Um, we're definitely going to pay close attention to the ridging. In terms of the possibility this will move close to the Caribbean, so... Um, it seems like there's going to be strong, a uh, strong amount of not of ridging for this to approach at least close to the Caribbean islands. Hopefully, we could see um, this trough somehow be able to steer it far to the north, where it doesn't even bring a strong um, rip current risk or um, rough surf along the Caribbean coast. But it seems like the ridging, based on the current consensus, is that they want to bring this at least marginally closer to the Caribbean islands. So I would expect that the strength forecast um, really all depends on the amount of dry air, um, but. Um, because we still potentially could see a little bit too much dry air for this storm system to handle. And there's still that possibility that maybe this could be a tropical storm by the time it approaches the Caribbean if there's a little bit too much dry air. This forecast is very far out, at least when it comes to a more manageable forecast time frame, right around 132 hours more. Um, out and um, we see the GFS model take a 996 millibar um, storm system which is close to hurricane size the European model is still um, hovering around um, tropical storm status by the same time period let me go to the 12 Z run and moving forward um, right around the same time period at around 100 30 hours out we see it's a very similar millibar pressure so a tropical storm is likely um surrounding um um at least um by next week um what's the big question remains how much dry air there will be to see if this will strengthen into a major hurricane um i'll say most likely though we're gonna see a tropical storm in the main development region and come marginally close to the caribbean but i but the ceiling is certainly high with this storm a major hurricane or even a regular hurricane is possible and the wind shear um i almost forgot to mention will be um relatively weak over the center circulation and in fact the upper level high above this center circulation will help the outflow which is certainly not good news so the caribbean definitely keep tabs on this storm system because um you could potentially see a major hurricane as early as next week now in terms of other tropical cyclones we're watching in the northern atlantic here is the remnants of Idalia, and you're probably wondering what's the status of um, post-tropical cyclone Idalia, because we were talking about in the last video if this could take a left turn towards the northeast. However, I'll say that it's definitely less likely at this point. It seems like there's not going to be a strong amount enough, um, enough of ridging for this to take a left hook. Um, that'll at least bring direct impacts to the northeast. Potentially, Maine could experience some gustier winds and some rain showers, um, but most likely, at least the remnants of Idalia should move towards um, eastern um, Canada. But at that point, it should be a fairly weak storm, but still keep in mind for gusty winds as well as an enhanced risk of rain showers right over southern Canada. Here's a look at what the European model is forecasting when it comes to tropical storm Idalia. And we do see Idalia also is very disorganized. Um, there's plenty of dry air just so west of it. And it's really on life support. Really the only thing that's keeping this storm afloat is that it's it's it does have quite a bit of instability. And you probably um, could tell over the northeast that it's a lot cooler and very dry. It feels very fall like right now over the northeast. And of course when you combine the cooler and more stable air with the very warm and tropical features um, surrounding the center circulation that would create enough instability for the wind speed and rotation to at least exist even if this isn't um, completely a tropical entity and moving forward we do see the european model interestingly does um develop this um 
or at least strengthen this quite a bit primarily due to instability and does bring stronger gustier winds right around um, Canada and even as far west as Maine but not much when it comes to rainfall and impacts which is certainly good news as it seems like it's just going to deal with a lot of dry air for this to at least be an extremely impactful storm for um, for eastern Canada which is definitely good news and in terms of Ch um, Chagwo Storm Franklin this is expecting to move out to sea not really bringing much of um, impacts of impacts at least to anyone in the western hemisphere and I'm um, continuing to move forward um this could merge with another mid latitude cyclone but it won't necessarily be considered a tropical NC at this point so Europe be um, at least be aware of the remnants of Franklin just um, when it comes to rainfall because it because it could bring an enhanced amount of rainfall over um, over portions of Europe and moving forward we also have um, tropical storm Gur, um, but it's struggling it's expected to dry out so not much to worry about there and also tropical storm Jose but it's expected to merge with post or, or at least um, tropical storm Franklin which um, is definitely um, good news and in terms of our other um, what likely will become tropical storm um, Katia we do see that it's expected to move northward thanks to a weakness in ridging um, right over the main development region if we were to take a look at the height anomaly right now you're going to clearly see that um th that there's barely any ridging so this um tropical storm katia will pretty much just move northward and will just dissipate thanks to the amount of dry air that's for northward as well as cooler sea surf temperatures so again not much to worry about there so at least um the good news is for the northern atlantic is that pretty much um all the tropical um so uh, disturbances we see outside of maybe idalia and um what likely will become our next major hurricane aren't expected to bring much of any impacts towards land um but still keep in mind of idalia right around eastern canada and the caribbean definitely pay close attention to our next potential major hurricane here's a look at the ensemble members and it does um look concerning um for several reasons for one thing is that much of the ensemble members want to develop a major hurricane as they're very aggressive in that fact and that does have me very concerned that a major hurricane is more likely than not um and at the very least a hurricane i'll say is definitely becoming highly likely at this point as this approaches the caribbean and a tropical storm is almost inevitable um and another thing too is that we do have some um quite a few ensemble members wanting to take direct impacts right over the lesser antilles and even as far south as puerto rico we're definitely going to pay close attention to how the ridging builds just the north of this storm system the stronger the ridging the more impacts we're likely to see for the caribbean and the united states needs to at least be aware of this possibility as well because maybe this could make the journey a lot um, further westward than you'd expect the european model as you can see is also showing a very similar forecast taking very a uh, very similar trajectory and strength as gfs model with some ensemble members taking direct impacts of the to the lesser antilles and puerto rico so um definitely um, um just be aware stay tuned for more updates right over the caribbean over the next several days because this could potentially become very concerning for you guys so yeah guys we're now approaching the most active portion of the hurricane season the the um date that's most synonymous with the most tropical cyclone activity is september 10th so we're pretty much right at the heart of the hurricane season and it's no surprise with what we're seeing right now with six tropical disturbances some in which could impact land so anywhere um along the At northern atlantic where you could um where a tropical cyclone could pose risks um along the coast you definitely want to keep tabs on the hurricane season especially um since um where um the sea surf temperatures right now are just um heating up overall which is definitely very concerning but that's it for now guys and i thank you guys for watching